a great place to start is getting comfortable with with boundaries. Um, you know, that's something that many of us have been taught have been taught kind of the opposite. Um, you know, to be generous to a fault, to you know help everyone, to let everyone in, to you know just to kind of keep making space for everyone but yourself. Um, and so I think learning that you know self care is not selfish that you have to preserve something, you know, not let the tank completely run empty. You know, I've, I've heard people make the analogy with, with your phone, like you wouldn't let your phone get to 3% and keep walking around with it, like you, you recharge it. And so, but we don't treat ourselves that way. So I think that, you know, really starting to think about, you know, what, you know, if I care about things, if I feel passionate, if I wanna make a change, what can I do to sustain myself for the long term? That running myself into the ground and being another person on the side of the road who, who now needs an intervention, like really isn't helping the, the bigger, bigger cause. And so resting is just so important. Um, and I think many of us have been shamed into, into doing that, uh, shamed into not doing that, I should say, um, you know, feeling like we have to keep pushing if we really care about something. So I think that, you know, starting there of just thinking, you know, how can I rejuvenate myself and if it has to be for the the bigger cause then if that's the frame that you need to be able to engage in this then i think that works you know to think about you know how do i serve my community how do i serve my family or whoever is in my life that i care about if i am completely depleted um, and then i think that you know going beyond students and kind of taking it taking it outwards i think the people who then support students also need to be doing this for themselves because then we can be, you know, mentally well, and so that we can, you know, take in whatever it is that that um, people are are bringing to us because we are um, in a healthy state. But when we too are depleted, we too, you know, have ignored our boundaries, have worked through the weekend, you know, the whole semester, um, then you know we we are not in a good space, um, and we won't be able to play the role of being an accomplice because we're now all messed up and wounded and have all of these needs that you know are not met and so then we're not able to i think show up and um you know be in a space where we can have the right kind of relationship um with with students so that it's all you know it's it's very much uh kind of this personal thing but then it goes out i think into into the larger system as well so if we could all just kind of you know calm down a little bit you know take some time breathe you know taking two minutes to, to breathe before you go into the next thing, um, you know, that, that you deserve that. Um, and if we can all kind of be engaging in this together, I think we'll be uh, in a slightly better place to, to carry on with the work. So I'm gonna say this as a psychologist who is part of the system, right? I firmly believe that exploring health support outside of the medical system is one of the only ways to survive. Right, because here's the unspoken power of um, young queer folk of color. We've always been creative in establishing systems of care. And I see these systems in the form of chosen family, identity-based fraternities and sororities, houses and ballroom culture, places of worship, even in the club is considered a form of health support, right? I think the healthcare system is one way of access and healing, but I think these other forms of community are equally powerful and formative and become protective factors against some of the mental health concerns that these communities face. I also want to, on an earlier point we mentioned, like we, we think about our students having multiple roles. I think you, Dr. Nakamura, shared that piece that they're students, they're on these boards, they're on, they're on these committees, and we need to also start thinking as a form of health of compensating these folks appropriately for their labor, right? The United States has such a rich history of student activism that I think it's time that we adequately compensate folks for their labor. And for some folks, compensation doesn't necessarily have to mean let's pay you a stipend or an honorarium. That's one way, but there, we have to get creative about thinking about health as not just existing within capitalism, although I will say money is important for many of these communities. But I think we need to think about compensation as like, let me see what your need is and if I have the skills and resources to meet some of these needs.